a land stark but strikingly beautiful, the descendants of Mongol invaders forge a living in a hostile environment. The Hazara people have themselves been conquered and conquered again. Their land is littered with the remnants of the Soviet occupation of the 1980s. And now their cemeteries are filled with hundreds of men and boys massacred when the Taliban swept through here eight years ago. Along with the rest of Afghanistan, Bamiyan is still under foreign occupation by an alliance of nations determined that democracy should prevail. Her name is Habiba Surabi, and she's Afghanistan's first and only woman governor. In a nation where the tribal greybeards have always dominated, this is rare public respect and recognition for a female leader. Women in Afghanistan have been deprived for a long time. This depression gave me the power to, to, to work. We have to have the self-confidence uh, because for a long time during the history, uh, the, um, uh, from the gender perspective, men killed the self-confidence for women. <laughs> One year into the job, Governor Surabi's mission to educate girls has had spectacular results. This school is without building, but uh, we can see how much the, the children are interested to their education. In Taliban times, they were banished to the home along with their mothers. Now girls make up just under half of the school population. In a country where fewer than a third of people can read and write their own names, the education of every young person is the governor's priority. She's not warlord and she's not fundamentalist or fanatic and she is educated and she wants the development and uh, the people there, they are united and they follow her. Uh, what she says. It is not the case with every province. The governor tours her province knowing that it's distinguished by something else. This is one of few places in Afghanistan where you won't find crops of opium poppy. As a nation, Afghanistan derives 60% of its income from the illicit drug. But here in Bamiyan, poor farmers have been persuaded by their governor to grow wheat and keep sheep and goats instead and maintain a subsistence lifestyle. The Taliban destroyed everything in, that, in this area and the geographical problem is also a problem here. Uh, and the weather is very cold. Many villagers here rely on handouts from aid groups for their very existence. The men here take receipt of their new stock with a fingerprint in ink. But although the soil can yield little, the landscapes here have put Bamiyan on the map. In the cliffs, the sorry remains of two giant Buddhas constructed 1,500 years ago. Condemned as icons, they were destroyed by the Taliban for being un-Islamic. This is how they looked before, an essential stopover on the Asian overland hippie trail in the 1970s. <laughs> کاش کلی متر سیدلافیک تالی بیکارم اگر 
خوب مردم رایت هست سه گشت گذار نمیتونست دید منطقه در این منطقه ای که امین مصاحب بود یا شاید سربالای توری Shopkeeper Ali told me about the day Afghanistan's biggest tourist attraction was wiped off the map. Archaeologists and restorers are now cataloguing every significant piece of rubble. But no one seriously thinks the Buddhas can ever be rebuilt. Undeterred that Bamiyan's most conspicuous asset has been obliterated, the governor is still talking up a tourist-led recovery. Tourism development can be a good income for the people, not only that uh, Bamiyan is a historical place, but because of landscape, because of the beauty, nature beauty, that, uh, which uh, Bamiyan has. Afghanistan will probably not grace holiday brochures for some time, with instability elsewhere in the country, but Bamiyan at least is peaceful and reasonably secure. A new Afghan police force is in training, tutored by some New Zealanders. And squeeze the trigger. Don't pull it, just gently squeeze the trigger. It might not be grown in Bamiyan, but the opium is nevertheless smuggled through the province. The recruits will have the job of stemming the drug trade. Good shooting. When they're here to learn, they listen to us. We give them instruction via the uh, Afghan instructors, and overall, we found very, very good. The Kiwis are here in force. There's also a reconstruction team from the New Zealand military. On the football field, its troops are hardly a match for the nimble Afghan opposition. Bamiyan's problem is that it's just too peaceful and laid back. While the lawless south of Afghanistan gets most of the money and attention of foreign governments and aid organisations, this place has been forgotten. Where is the peace dividend for Bamiyan? Bamiyan should be held up as a model to the rest of Afghanistan as to what reconstruction and development could happen if you had a, a peaceful, secure and stable environment. On the road once more in her sprawling province, Governor Habiba Surabi has overturned yet another most conservative tradition. <laughs> the village feast is usually an all-male affair to welcome a male leader. This new governor has brought the senior women of the village to the gathering. I think they encourage now, uh, because I'm here, uh, they persuade to come here to, to participate in uh, such a gathering with lunch together with us. The governor's influence doesn't stop with the matriarchs of the village. Some of the girls and younger women here have a new ambition in life. They too want to be governor one day. And now is uh, Habiba Sarabi, the governor of Bamiyan, become a role model for this area and the role model for all Afghanistan. <laughs> so do they see you as a, a mother figure as well as a governor? Yes, so most of the time when they come to my office, they, they, um, they share this issue that you are like a mother, like, uh, you are like an elder sister. She's a, a very intelligent woman. She's got a, a vision for the um, province of Bamiyan, and she's working hard to get there. 
I would suggest that perhaps um, she's not getting the kind of support she requires from the central government to uh, progress the, uh, the Bamian province. This is another face of democracy at work in Afghanistan. I'm driving with this country's most recognisable woman, but she dares not be seen on the streets of Kabul. Right now, the situation is getting worse and worse, especially security. Malalai Joya is 28 years old, an under-armed guard because of the constant threat of being murdered. Today, she'll confront her enemies. My life also should be an example. Why it has been and I'm not sure that after one hour I will be alive or not. After one day I will be alive or not. But because of my people I accept these risks. The people who want to kill her, she claims, are her fellow parliamentarians. First period was about life changed for Malalai Joya when she became a member of the Afghan National Assembly and denounced her colleagues in the House. Most of them are drug lords, criminals, criminals like Taliban criminals like jihadi people that they did lots of crimes under the name of jihad and islam these are the people she's talking about the elected leaders of afghanistan a quota means that one third of them are women many of the men are former commanders of the mujahideen warriors who fought against soviet invaders and then turned on each other and in doing so tore their country apart. Once supported by the Americans with arms, now they're being dignified with a seat in parliament. When the government is owned by the warlords, when the parliament is owned by the warlord, it's not easy to talk against them. It is dangerous. It is dangerous. Any one of them, if they want to terrorize some persons, Men or women, they can do it. Malala Joya was in trouble from her very first speech in Parliament. That was the day she called for colleagues to be tried for war crimes. After my speech, they cut my wife and they stand up against me. They threw a bottle of water and they threatened me to death. Even one of them shouted that take and rape her inside of the Parliament. They learned how to wear suit, how to wear tie, how to talk about democracy and women's rights, but they do not believe. This is one of the men in her sights. Haji Almos fought with the Americans against the Taliban. But in his former life as a Mujahideen commander, human rights organizations claim he led fighters who shelled civilians, abducted them and ransacked their villages. The Taliban have been driven from Kabul, but life is still a struggle for most people here. They still don't have dependable electricity or water, and crime is rampant. The Hamid Karzai government might claim to have introduced democracy, but that hasn't guaranteed prosperity. Many citizens are still living under canvas or in rubble. And Mr. Karzai, when he came, he promised in his speeches for the people, I will bring um, clinics for you, water for you, make roads for you, construct your houses for you. I will bring to justice the warlords and the, um, uh, the uh, criminals of war. He did do nothing about these things.
خانم ملاله جویا هم اعتراضی دارن اگر اجازه بدین به نام خدا In Parliament, Malala Joya has a rare chance to attack the so-called warlords she eyeballs each day. But the opportunity was never going to last. So, so they, they chopped you off again at the microphone? Yeah, they, they destroy all the destroy and they, they just give me chance. But... This is not the market. I want to tell you this is the market after this. You are looking large buildings here in Tabor. That these buildings, long buildings, belong to criminals, to drag laws, to war laws. For Malalai Joya, it's been another frustrating day's work in a place touted by some as one of the world's newest democracies. What makes it worse for her is that it's too dangerous to visit her electorate in western Afghanistan. Lawlessness outside of Kabul means that dozens of MPs never get to go to the place they represent. I'm young and I, right now I have energy. I want to go to university. I want to continue to my education because I have hope that in the future I serve my people better and more and more, especially women of Afghanistan and daughter of Afghanistan, how much they need to some woman like me. I know about my role. Even Kabul itself is getting risky for Malalai Joy. So you, you keep changing houses, do you? Changing houses, yeah. yeah, because of security, I'm changing houses for two days, three days and like this. Then I'm going with a bag of my box and bag of my clothes to another house. So a different house every few days? Yeah, a different house, support that house, but now they are starting Isolated in this new democracy, Malalai's supporters must come to her. In many ways, Hamid Karzai's new Afghanistan is still a man's world. The military strongmen who helped the West defeat the Taliban have now become businessmen and entrepreneurs. And those who stand in their way, as ever, face every kind of peril.